What's up, party people? Welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm Jamila. This is Jamila Be Readin' because I do be reading. And today's video is gonna be a new series, hopefully. <laughs> I feel like I'm constantly introducing new series, either on here or on TikTok, that I'm not always following up with, but I'm hoping that that will be the case this time. And that is giving authors a second chance. This is not a new or groundbreaking concept, but I really like the idea of kind of like revisiting authors where I didn't maybe have like the best of luck with the first book that I read from them. So in this particular video, I'm going to be reading from three authors where I read one book and have given it like three, around three stars. Um, I think in future videos, I'd like to do authors that I've DNF'd or authors where I've given like one or two stars and seeing if <laughs> if they're for me or not. Um, these three authors in particular, I feel like I had high hopes um, and some, some parts of their previous books like have been lingering in my mind. So I'm like really curious to see like where these other books are going to land for me. So let's talk about it. The first author is Sally Rooney. I read Beautiful World, Where Are You? I want to say like a year and a half ago. And I gave that one three stars. I didn't love it. There were parts of it that kind of bothered me. It felt very like kind of like white feminism-y in my opinion. And I didn't love the like letter concept between the two friends all that much. But there were parts of it that I feel like really stuck with me. And I I go back and think about that book kind of like often. So I'm, I'm really curious, like I'm not uh, ready to completely write off Sally Rooney. So I'm going to pick up Normal People. I did a poll over on my Instagram stories like a month ago now when I first like thought of this concept to see if I should read Normal People or um, Conversations with Friends. And uh, it seemed like more people thought that I would enjoy normal people more. So I'm gonna pick that one up and read it, and we'll see how that goes. The second author is Candace Cardi Williams. Um, I this is the one that like hurts me the most every time I think about uh, this book. I, I read Queenie like around two years ago now, and I just like I thought it was gonna be a five star. You know, I feel like it's within that canon of messy black girl lit fic up there with like such a fun age and luster, which are two books that I gave five stars and loved. And Queenie was always up <laughs> in that trio. And I was like, of course I'm gonna love this book, obviously. And then it just, for some reason, it really didn't work for me. I gave it three stars. Um, to this day, it's probably the most disappointing <laughs> book I've ever read just because I came in with such high expectations. It's not a bad book by any means, but it just did not live up to probably the overhyped expectations that I had about this book. So um, I was very excited to see that Candace Cardi Williams has a new book out. I've been kind of eyeing it. I've been wanting to like buy it. <laughs> Every time I go to the bookstore, I'm like, ooh. And I'm like, no, what about if you don't like this one? So I got it from the library instead. Um, and that is People Person? Person People? People person. I think that the UK cover looks a lot better than the US version, but alas, I am here in the US, so what can I do? And I'm getting it from the library, so. I don't really know what this one's about, so we'll see. Um, I haven't really looked at reviews. I don't really know what people are thinking about this book. To be honest, Like I'm kind of shocked that I haven't heard a lot of people talking about this one, uh, considering how popular Queenie was, so it'll be interesting. And then finally, the, <laughs> the last author, is Allie Hazelwood. I read, um, what is it called? The Love Hypothesis. And I'll be honest, this one is definitely the lowest rated of these three <laughs> authors. I initially gave The Love Hypothesis three stars, but I think upon years of reflection now, again, I, I read this one around like a year and a half to two years ago when it first came out. And uh, I think it's probably more of like a 2.5 star now, but I'm just gonna count it um, amongst amongst this, these others for this video. It's just, it was silly. It was silly goofy, but not in a silly goofy way that I love, to be honest. Like everyone just felt very childish. I was confused. I was bamboozled. I don't know what was going on. <laughs> 
There was a lot that I did not love about that book, um, but it was like not the worst thing I ever read. So Allie Hazelwood has since come out with like a trio of novellas, another book. None of those have piqued my interest, but um, her newest release, which I'm blanking on the name right now, but it'll it'll be here. I actually I have a copy of it, but I, I'm not gonna get up to grab that right now. But I've been hearing a lot of people loving this book and people who didn't like the love hypothesis saying that they loved it. People are saying this is her best work yet. So I'm very intrigued. I'm hoping I will have a better experience with Allie Hazelwood because you know, I'm just trying to have fun like everyone else. I'm not I'm not trying to be a hater, you know what I mean? So, we'll see. We'll see how this goes. I don't know which book I'm going to start off with, but I am probably going to start a book tonight. And I will vlog and let y'all know how I'm feeling about these books. Yeah. Hello. Um, I look a little rough, you know, just got home from work. Well, it's been like an hour since I got home from work. I started a book. I did. I started People Person by Candace Cardi Williams, and I'm about three chapters in, so I'm not very far. Um, but I have to say that I feel like I'm going to enjoy this a lot more than Queenie. Like, I'm intrigued. I, to be honest, like, I really didn't know what this book was about, but there's a little bit of, you know, death. <laughs> It seems like a bit of a dark comedy. Uh, I'm just like really intrigued to see like where this book is gonna go. But yeah, I'm definitely enjoying it so far more than I did Queenie. So we'll see. I have high hopes. I have high hopes. I'll come back to you when I have more to say, I guess. Hello, I've come to you having finished a book. I finished People Person by Candy Cardis Williams. And um, I'm, I'm like ruminating on my thoughts right now. I realized that I, I don't think I ever talked exactly about what this book is about. But basically we are following five half siblings. Um, their father, Cyril, who is a Jamaican immigrant to the UK, he slept around. <laughs> he, you know, he's kind of like the life of the party, very extroverted, very outgoing very charming and he just like really could not be bothered with being a responsible adult <laughs> so he basically got four different women pregnant perhaps more uh but four that we know of that culminated in five children he was not really present in any of their lives did not really pay child support did not care for them and so now we're following these kids and um, I guess we follow the perspectives of all five of them, but I would say our main protagonist is Dimple. She's 30 years old and she's kind of like a wannabe social media influencer. <laughs> uh, she doesn't really have like a big following and she's a little bit selfish. Uh, she's very, very, very emotional. She's a double cancer as she, uh, repeatedly points out throughout the book and as a fellow cancer but not a double cancer there were some times like where I kind of related to her but other times I was like please get your shit together she doesn't have a job she lives with her mom who's a lawyer she has an ain't shit boyfriend named Chiron who um is our kind of like our inciting incident for this book she is breaking up with him for good he, they have like an on again, off again relationship, but she's trying to break up with him for good. And he ends up um, attacking her when she's breaking up with him. And he gets into an accident, <laughs> let's say. I don't want to spoil exactly what happens in this book, but then it kind of turns uh, a little bit into like a murder mystery in some respects. And then it kind of, that, that's what intrigued me initially. I was like, ooh, this was not what I was expecting. I kind of want hijinks, but also like an exploration of like family. You know what I mean? I was like, I'm here for the interpersonal drama while there is also hijinks happening in the background. Hijinks really stopped after a while. Uh, the middle part was kind of uh, meandering. It started to lose me a little bit. I definitely think the first half of the book was stronger than the second half of the book. I just felt like 
because we focus so heavily on Dimple, we didn't really get, in my opinion, like resolution for some of the other siblings, like Nikisha, who is the eldest. Um, she definitely has major elder sister <laughs> syndrome, like intensely. And I was kind of hoping that would be explored a little bit more. Um, there was some stuff going on with one of the older brothers who dealt with a lot of things in his life. And I was kind of wanting more from that. I kind of wanted more about the father. Like, I don't know. It just like, there are parts of it that I really liked. But I don't know that it really like got a full home run. It didn't really like super commit to some of the things that it like brought up initially, in my opinion. I will say one thing. Candace Cardi Williams knows how to do is write a pathetic main character. <laughs> Dimple, um, she kind of reminded me a little bit of Queenie, who I did not like. I liked Dimple a little bit more, but man, it's really just about women who don't have their shit together, which I love a messy black girl story, but I don't know, something about the way that Candace Cardi Williams tends to write her protagonists, I, I, I don't know that I'm necessarily vibing with. I really did like the other siblings, I wanted more from them, but I, I'm, I'm really curious, like I might try to go look up some like author interviews and see what, um, what she has said about this book, because I'm just like really curious why I've noticed a pattern of like who she wants to write, like the type of character she wants to write about, and I'm just kind of curious about that now. So where are we at with this giving? Um, authors a second chance. I'm feeling a little mixed because I did like this book more than Queenie, but I wouldn't say like by a ton. I think I'm, I'm still trying to figure out what rating I would give it, but it's kind of right now in this moment I'm thinking a 3.75 is the rating. It could fluctuate. Like I feel like it could be between like a 3.5 and a 4, somewhere along that, that range. So I think it is kind of a success because I did like this book more. Will I be picking up another book from this author in the future? I think I'm willing to give her a third try. Like I, I do think she is a strong writer and she writes about interesting things and interesting topics. So I don't know, maybe it, whenever she writes another book, because this is her sophomore novel, um, maybe that that will be the ultimate deciding factor for me. But for now, I would say that this was like a mostly success and I am willing to pick up more from this author in the future. Hello, um, this is perhaps rough lighting. I don't know, I'm being lit by my bedside lamp. Obviously it is nighttime, I am in bed. I'm ready for bed. It's actually the next day since I finished People Person, I believe. Um, I actually went on to finish, start and finish um, another book yesterday. I stayed up until like 3 a.m. accidentally reading it. And that was Love Theoretically by Allie Hazelwood. Now, this is, um, Allie Hazelwood I feel like is known for her like, Steminist, <laughs> her like feminist scientist uh, romances. It really seems to be her shtick. Um, I'm really curious to see if she's gonna write about any other kind of protagonist um, in her writing career, but uh, we'll see. So this one is following, I think her name is Elsie. Yeah, her name is Elsie. She's a theoretical physicist. Um, she is a somewhat recent grad student, just graduated, and she's a current adjunct professor at like multiple different universities in Boston. If you're aware of how adjunct uh, professor professorship works, um, they don't get paid very well, and they are expected to take on a lot of classes, so she is like not getting paid well, she's like really overwhelmed and exhausted, um, but she is um, interviewing for a tenure track professor position at MIT. So she's going through this interviewing process for about a half of this book. And uh, apparently, 
You know, I don't know if this is true in real life, but theoretical physicists and experimental uh, physicists, they're beefing, okay? Apparently they beef. I don't know if this is true in real life. Low key, like if you're a physicist or have any knowledge about this, I would love all the tea about this experimental versus theoretical physicist drama. I really know next to nothing about physics. I did take a physics class in college, a calculus-based physics class actually. Um, that I did in fact fail. So that should tell you um, my level of ability to understand physics. Uh, anyways, tell me the tea if you have it. But she also on the side, because she's brokeity broke, uh, she like fake dates people through an app and gets paid to like be a fake date for guys. And she has a person who is kind of her regular, even though that's a uh, against i think the app rules like it's supposed to be just like one-off dates but because she likes him um, and has good rapport with him she has been pretending to be his girlfriend for uh, a while and he his name is greg and he um, has an older brother named jack who happens to be an experimental physicist who wrote this uh like it was like a fake paper to discredit discredit physicists and it was submitted to a theoretical uh physics journal and it was accepted and then it caused like a lot of controversy because obviously it was fake and the editor like basically was a quack after that no one wanted to give him funding it really like damaged theoretical physics as a um, a field a lot of stuff Okay, and so she doesn't know that he's a physicist. There's some miscommunication and she thinks he's a PE teacher. Anyways, it turns out he's a part of the hiring committee um, at MIT. And so now he's like trying to figure out like what's her deal because she says she's a librarian. It's just, it's like this whole kerfluffle and um, all that, all, all of that. What did I think of this book? You know, that's a great question. I think I do like it more than the love hypothesis. The love hypothesis was just like tropey, you know, in a level that I really like that was just a bit too much for me. It was a little bit too corny. It was cringy. I literally um, felt like Sokka in the secret tunnel episode. Uh, Lovers of Omashu. That feels, that does, no, why? Okay, anyways, <laughs> that's not important right now, but I feel like Sokka in that episode when he's with the the nomads and he keeps like smacking his forehead every time they say something, that's how I felt reading the love hypothesis, okay? This one was still a little bit tropey, still a little bit corny at times, but not as much which I appreciated. I thought it was pretty readable, but to be honest, like I thought the love hypothesis was pretty readable too. Like I, I read it all in one sitting and same with this one, like it's fun, you know? I don't hate it, but I don't know. I don't know where I land on this one. Like I definitely like it more, but I think it's maybe like a 3.5 star at this point, which is like not bad at all. I really liked Jack as a love interest yeah what can i say <laughs> i liked him i do think that he was a little too much at times for sure um he just has this like overwhelming need to take care of elsie and it got to the point where i was like bruh like chill out like she is her own person uh but for the most part like i liked him um i liked them together and yeah, I feel like, I don't know, mostly indifferent towards this book. Um, so it is, I guess, much like People Person. I did like it more than the, the prior book that I read by the author, but not by much, you know? Like I'm still feeling like a little bit at a loss on like how I feel about this author or these authors and their books. Will I pick up another Allie Hazelwood? I don't know. I feel like maybe not 
if she happens to write something that's not like another like steminist novel then i might be interested in checking it out or if it just has like a like a really really interesting premise then maybe but i just like i'm not feeling like super wowed it kind of seems like all of her books are kind of like a variation of the same story to a degree so i don't know this one's like a maybe anyways let's talk about the next the final book because i have started that and i'm actually like 40 percent of the way through it i've just been on like i've been reading this is really <laughs> This is really bizarre for me because I feel like every time I try to make some sort of like um, themed reading experiment or vlog, it just takes me so long to read these books because I'm a mood reader or I'm busy, but I, I've been really vibing uh, with reading lately, <laughs> I guess. I've been in a reading mood and I didn't really have much going on this weekend. It's also so hot here in Portland. Today was like 102 degrees. Tomorrow's gonna be 107 degrees. Like, <sighs> terrible, absolutely terrible. Honestly, Portland has had like pretty mild summer this year, I would say. Um, the last like five years or so has just been increasingly hotter and hotter. And like a lot of like high 90s, a lot of like breaking records for the amount of hundreds. like. It's just been kind of like unbearably hot here in the summers. Um, so comparatively, this summer was pretty mild. Like I'd say like pretty consistently, it's been in the 80s, which I feel like is an ideal temperature for the summer for me, you know? Um, but you know, I guess it had to happen at some point. It is August. Uh, it's usually, I feel like when it gets pretty hot. Um, so yeah, that's just gonna be God awful for the next week. Uh, but it's expected to go back down to like the low 80s by this weekend, so wish me luck. Anyways, all of this rambling aside, I started Normal People by Sally Rooney. Um, I'm 40% of the way in, like I said, and I don't know, like, <laughs> I just feel like this experiment is like not going the way I was hoping. I was hoping to either like have I, I was just hoping to have like some sort of like definitive feeling about these authors like either no I don't like this I don't think the author is for me or you know what I actually really like this book I think there's a future for me and this author to continue in this readership author journey that we're on okay um but I'm just feeling like very confused <laughs> by all of these books so normal people i'm sure many people already know about it's incredibly popular there's a hulu tv series adaptation of it um it's following these two uh characters connell and marianne who kind of start dating when they're in their final year of high school and we're kind of watching this relationship over the course of like that year in high school through university and kind of like watching how their social roles switch because Marianne was very much kept to herself, unpopular, was kind of bullied, and Connell was very popular, uh, well liked by everyone, and then it kind of switches when they get to college and he kind of like is having a hard time making friends, he's having a hard time relating to people because he is um, like he's poor and a lot of people at this university are pretty well off, including Marianne. So there's kind of like this class thing going on uh, amongst the like dynamics of their relationship. And, um, and then Marianne is pretty popular in college and we're just kind of following their relationship, I suppose. They are, um, I think, toxic and not very good for each other. I can't say that I'm bored per se. It is like, kind of boring when you think about it but i do find it to be kind of like compulsively readable that you know the one thing i'll give sally rooney is that she knows how to write like i think she's a very strong writer she has like a very distinctive prose obviously like uh, the thing that people talk about with sally rooney is that she doesn't use quotation marks with dialogue and it's just like very all over the place kind of 
But it, it, I find it personally interesting to read. But I just, I don't know that I'm necessarily like vibing with the commentary that she's making in her books. Like some of it I agree with, others I don't. It just feels like, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. And maybe that's just because we, we live very different lives. Maybe that's it. Also, I am not um, Irish, you know, I'm American. <laughs> I don't know if that has something to do with it. I mean, obviously, th that doesn't really matter because, like I said, this book is very popular and there's obviously a lot of Americans who like this book. But I don't know. It's just like, in some ways, it feels very, like, white feminist to me. And it's like, oh, well, like, we're having kind of an interesting discussion about class here, but then there's some other weird shit that happens and I don't know. It, it's just... I find it all to be very strange and bizarre and it makes me like kind of want to know more about Sally Rooney as a person because I'm I'm just kind of confused by like what she's trying to do with her books you know what I mean I find quite frankly none of this relatable in this book both of these people are kind of a hot mess uh Marianne deserved better <laughs> when she was dating Connell in high school and then Connell like clearly has a lot to deal with uh, internally. Uh, they both do really and quite frankly they need to go to therapy and they need to um, not date each other I think. Maybe something to revisit after years of extensive therapy but also maybe it's just not meant to be. But you know I will continue reading and I will let y'all know when I've finish the book, I guess. <laughs> I just feel like I've been talking for a long time. I'll catch y'all in the next clip. Hello, my friends. Let's talk about normal people. <laughs> I finished it like two days ago. I really didn't like it. I really didn't. Yeah, you know, it was kind of an upward trajectory with the other authors. This one was a massive down, downgrade. It was a massive downgrade. I ended up giving this one 1.5 stars. And I, yeah, <laughs> I'm trying to like gather my thoughts here. I think Sally Rooney is a talented author. Like I think she's a really good writer, but I think from this experiment, now having read two of her books, I just don't think she's writing about topics or stories that I am personally interested in. I also think that maybe what she was trying to do didn't quite land, at least for me. There were certain topics, domestic violence, like fam family abuse, class, that I just don't know that were necessarily handled well or with care. Like I mentioned when I said that this feels very like white feminism, what I mean is in particular, and I guess this is kind of spoilers, but Marianne dates like at least two people who are well off and also like <laughs> are racist <laughs> um, or are affiliated with neo-Nazis. And when Connell kind of calls her out or the story kind of talks about it, it's like really like glossed over. And it's kind of like, she's like, oh, well, I don't agree with them. Or like, oh, like we're like different people. But then that's it, that, that's all that there is. And I'm just like side-eyeing, side-eyeing hardcore. Bombastic side-eye, criminal offensive side-eye. The ending kind of infuriated me. I know it's supposed to be just like a snapshot in these people's lives and how they keep coming back together, separating, but being drawn to each other and just like uh, like the constant arguing and misunderstanding each other. <sighs> like perhaps it's realistic, I don't know. Me personally, I've never really experienced people like this before, so I I'm sure they exist, but this was just a little too much for me. On TikTok, it was on Friends Only, I made this <laughs> comment, basically said that normal people is a better written after like the after series by Anna Todd. And I know I, I feel the intake of breath right now, but allow me to explain. I haven't read the after series. I have uh, religiously watched the movies though. And you're probably thinking, what is wrong with you? 
I, I love mess. I really do, especially in movie format. I love, I just love watching bad movies. <laughs> but anyways, so that's my experience with after. And it just like, the reason why I say it's a better written after, it's like both of them are about two young people in college who meet under, well, and, and younger, who meet under like, kind of not like false pretenses. I mean, in the after situation it is, but like, there's like a very clear like imbalance of like social hierarchy. They date and they keep, it's like very, these are very two toxic people who have a lot of internal work that they need to do. And I think they desperately need therapy and they keep misunderstanding each other and poorly communicating with each other. And they keep getting together and not being together and dating other people and being mad about dating other people and getting back together. And then this constant back and forth, like it's the same story, <laughs> except one is better written. You know what I mean? And speaking of therapy, like Connell does end up going to therapy in this, which I thought was nice. But Marianne so desperately needed therapy. And another thing that I <laughs> I'm thinking of right now, I think that Marianne has an eating disorder and that just was never touched on at all, really. And that felt a little concerning to me. All of that being said, I did, I did kind of hate this book. I, I am going to use the word hate because I did bring out a visceral reaction to me uh, reading, especially like the second half of this book until the end. I'm f I feel very calm about it right now, but I was, I was <laughs> not happy with this book. I don't think it's good. I don't think it was, it handled the topics that it maybe was trying to discuss well. And yeah, I don't know. This leads me to like, would I pick up another Sally Rooney book? I'm definitely not interested in picking up conversations with friends. I am not, I don't think I'm interested in picking up more from this author. Like maybe in the future, new books, if it's like really something that seems appealing to me, I might, but I just, like I said, I don't think that Sally Rooney is writing the type of stories that I personally wanna read. So I don't see that happening in the future. So I think that's a no for me. Okay, so let's recap. <laughs> this video is now done. Let's recap. I read People Person by Candace Cardi Williams and I gave that one 3.75 stars. I did enjoy it more than Queenie and I do think that I'll be picking up more from this author. The second book that I read was Love Theoretically by Allie Hazelwood. I gave that one around a 3.5 stars. Again, another one that I did enjoy more uh, than the love hypothesis. Will I pick up more from this author? I feel it kind of iffy. I think it'll kind of depend on what she writes next. I don't have interest in picking up uh, Love on the Brain or any of the like novellas that she did, uh, but I, I think I'll be keeping my eye out on her and what new releases that she puts out and I, I might read more. And then Sally Rooney, um, I gave Normal People 1.5 stars. Uh, I liked it worse then Beautiful World, Where Are You? And I think me and Sally Rooney's time has come to an end. So I hope y'all enjoyed this video. I thought this was fun. I, I do think it was kind of fun. And I feel like I learned more things a little bit. I The next installment of this giving authors a second chance that I'd like to do is picking up books from authors that I've DNF'd in the past. I don't know when I'm going to do that video, but that will be the next installment in this specific series. So keep an eye out for that. Subscribe to this channel, that'd be great. Follow me on TikTok, on Instagram, uh, on Twitter. I've been actually tweeting more. Follow me there, I guess. <laughs> and I'll see y'all in the next video. Mm -hmm.